Hi everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, a rejuvenation, specifically a CRT rejuvenation. Let's get right to it. What you see on the bench here is a Macintosh Classic Deconstructed. This was the faulty power supply I showed in a previous video, and it turned out the problem with it was entirely the output caps over here. You may recall the very leaky capacitor that dumped its electrolyte all over this thing. I swapped out the one capacitor and the power supply still wasn't working properly. Well, thanks to a recent purchase of this LCR meter, I was able to identify and figure out that a couple more of the output caps were actually bad. Once I swapped out these three capacitors with brand new Rubicon caps, this power supply is now working perfectly. Really, this video is about this CRT. It's actually hooked up and working right now. As you may notice, it has the Macintosh flashing disk icon here. This is the CRT I took out of the Classic 2, where I replaced this with one of the CRTs out of that rusty Macintosh, and it was nice and bright in that Macintosh Classic 2. This is the newly repaired power supply from one of the classics, and as you can see, the CRT is very dim on this as well. I've been waiting to get an old tired CRT in the digital basement so I could test the rejuvenation on it. A few years ago, I picked up this old dusty box from a local Goodwill here in Portland. And at first, with this tatty appearance, you might just write this off as a junky old box. But if you flip the lever and you open this up, take a look at what's inside. This is a BNK Model 465 CRT tester. And from my understanding, this thing is from the 60s, so it's definitely really old. But I feel lucky to have any CRT tester at all because these things just aren't that common anymore. They would have been found in TV repair shops, and as all of those shops are long since closed and out of business, these testers are now getting harder and harder to find. Now, I think BNK was making CRT testers well into the 80s, so there are newer models than this, plus there are some models from other companies which are probably going to be better than this old thing. But I thought this old tired CRT would be perfect for testing the rejuvenation feature on this tester to see if it has any effect and could actually make the picture brighter on this thing. The first thing I want to do is get a baseline on the brightness of this CRT. This control on the analog board is what controls the G2, or screen brightness. And as I turn this up, you'll see the picture does get brighter, but if I turn it up too much, we're now getting the rasters visible or the retrace lines. And that's because the G2 voltage going into this picture tube is simply too high. The problem is when you turn up the G2 too high, like it is right now, is the contrast ratio really suffers. So things that should be black, like over here in the border, is actually a gray now. And I measured the G2 voltage on the back of the CRT, and with it turned up this bright, it's actually running at 611 volts, while here according to the schematics, it should be around 316 volts. And if I turn G2 down to about that amount, the brightness is more like this. It's very, very dark. So let's hook up the B&K tester to this CRT. Let's take a closer look at this tester. So it did come with the manual, and inside here is a setup guide for various picture tubes. So these are all sorts of picture tubes, color and monochrome, different sizes and part numbers. And it tells you which adapter to use and what the heater voltage is. Now, fortunately, since this is from the 60s, all the picture tubes in here are ancient. I looked up some of these random part numbers. I saw stuff from the 50s and the 60s. So this isn't really going to be much help when it comes to stuff from the 80s and the 90s or even the 2000s. And here's the manual, which doesn't have a whole lot going on in here other than it does tell you a little bit about how to use this thing, which is good because I have no clue what I'm doing with this thing. So this is going to be useful for doing a setup, but here's how it talks about doing the emission test for black and white tubes and a life test. And here's a section on removing shorts. Now, if the picture tube had shorts, it wouldn't even be working as well as it is right now. It would probably not work at all. So I don't have to worry about those, but restoring emission, this is the rejuvenation section that we're talking about. So you may have seen testers like this on other people's channels, but typically how it works is you got some cables here. One of them is a power cord, and you can check out absolutely how sketchy this is. Someone has, I guess, reinstalled this plug at some point with this horrible looking one from the 60s. And then on the end of this gray cable, you have the tube socket connectors, and there are several that it came with. 
which unfortunately none are even remotely compatible with any modern things, at least stuff that I've ever seen. This was the socket that was on the end of the cable. They call this the regular socket, which I guess was really common in the 50s and the 60s. And then this here is an adapter that plugged into this socket and then adapted to two other sockets. Now it wasn't originally cut like it is here. I cut this because I wanted to see if I could tone out the signals from this adapter and that way I could connect my own tube sockets to this. But for whatever reason, it turns out that something's wrong with this adapter because none of these pins have any continuity to any of these wires. And this is sort of a molded socket, so there's nothing I can do about this. So what I decided to do is just cut off the wires off this regular socket. And then with the cut wires, I installed these butt connectors and I had this tube socket here, which I think I took off of a monitor I had that was trash and I e-wasted it, but I saved this thinking that I would be able to adapt this socket to this tester and use it on CRTs like this one. So this printout is not gonna be easy to say because it didn't print very well, but this is the schematics for this tester. And I need to figure out the colors of the wires that were for G1, G2, the heater, stuff like that. Things I would need to connect to this socket adapter here to use on that CRT. And this is the conversion I did. This is some random CRT from the 50s. It uses the regular socket that was what was on this thing. So with this little diagram here, I can tell what's the heater, K, G2, G1, and then I could figure out which wires went to what. Now you see extra wires here that aren't connected to anything, and this is for the color CRTs that this thing can possibly test, but I'm not using that, I'm just doing black and white. So using the schematic from the Mac Classic, I was able to figure out what's G1, K, and the heater and whatnot, and then I figured out how to splice these together so that when I connect this socket onto the back of that CRT, all the right signals are going to all the right places. So let's get this thing set up. First, I'm gonna plug in this super sketchy power cord. The function switch on this is set to off right now, so it does have a power LED that seems to work. And on the CRT, let's pull off this neck board. I can leave everything else connected. I'll tuck that under there, and we will plug in my little adapter board here. and we're ready to start testing. So before turning this on, there's a few things you have to check. So I'm gonna leave G1 volts down at zero, and then this knob here is for G2, which on this CRT I'm gonna to put to a little over 300 volts. There we go. And then before turning this on, you have to make sure you have the heater set correctly. The heater is the filament that glows inside of this picture tube when it's running. And a lot of them run at 6.3 volts, which actually has a special mark right here on this meter. But I happen to know both from the schematics and I also tested with my multimeter that the heater on this CRT runs at 12 volts. Now because these types of meters are pretty inaccurate, what I ended up doing is using my digital multimeter and setting the voltage range selection here from 10 to 12, 13 volts and then adjusting the heater adjust here to be around 12 volts. And then I drew on here with a Sharpie for 12 volts. So as long as I have this adjusted to point to 12 volts, no matter what this is actually reading because these just aren't super accurate, I know I'm giving the correct heater voltage to the CRT. The filament's a bit like a light bulb, so you really don't wanna give it too much voltage or you could burn it out, which will destroy the CRT. Okay, so heater voltage is from 10 to 13 volts. I have it set for 12 volts here. The color switch is set for R, which is what black and white CRTs use. G1 is set for zero and G2 is just over 300 volts. So let's turn this on to heater adjust. Now this popped up and is showing a reading, but it's currently just showing the heater voltage which is reading under 12 volts, but with the multimeter, I could see that it was actually at 12 volts. It won't be possible to see because of all the light in here, but if you turn off the lights, I can see the glowing filament inside of the picture tube. All right, so the CRT is warmed up. I'm gonna change this to this next setting, which is shorts. Now the meter drops off, but there are three lights here, H, G1, and G2. And there might be combinations of these lights that are on, which are described in the manual. If they light up, then there are short circuits inside the CRT. There's a function on here to try to blow those shorts out. I don't know what this thing does, send a bunch of high voltage into it or something, but luckily I don't have any shorts, so I don't have to worry about that. Next up, we're gonna switch this to emission. So the needle now is reading in the bad and the good section. And emissions have to do with how many electrons are coming off the back of the CRT that would head towards the phosphor. And as you see here, it's pretty low, but we're not quite done with the setup though. The manual says to change the knob to cutoff, and you see the needle drop down here. Now what we're trying to do is get the needle to be over this line right here by the zero where it says cutoff. You see it says cutoff there? 
And the way you bring that down to the right section is you turn up this G1 knob slowly until it's right over the line, which now looks about right to me. It's just over the line. So if I go back to a mission now, what this is telling us is something we already knew, and it's that this CRT is worn out and it has bad emissions, which results in a dim picture. So let's check out the manual on restoring emission. It tells us to set the function switch to Dyna Low, and then press the dynamic intensifier button momentarily. Repeat the emission test on either page eight or page nine. If the meter reads in the good section, you successfully rejuvenated the tube. If the emission test is still low, place the function switch to Dyna Medium and allow 15 seconds for the heater to come up to operating temperature. Press the dynamic intensifier button. If the emission is still low, repeat again on the Dyna High position. Now I've read lots about these tube rejuvenation features on these testers and that a lot of people say they're total crap. There's one school of thought that if it does work at all, it's a very temporary fix. And really in the old days when a TV repairman come out to look at your TV and it was dim, he might do this on here to allow the tube to work brightly for a little while while a new CRT was ordered and he would come back and install the new one. There might be YouTube videos of doing this exact thing with the A and the B testing, you know, showing the before and the after to see if it actually gets brighter, but I don't really recall seeing that. Well, it was totally my intent to take this CRT and drop it off at e-waste because really it's too dim to use in this state. So if using the rejuvenation feature turns this CRT into a piece of trash, it doesn't matter, right? Because it was already a piece of trash. So we might as well try this for science and see if this actually makes a difference. Okay, one thing that's interesting is you notice the needle has actually gone just ever so slightly into the good section. And that actually is a behavior of this CRT that I actually noticed in real life. When it's hooked up to the computer, and if I go away and come back 10 minutes later, it's actually looking a little bit brighter than it was initially when you turn it on. And that seems to be reflected on this needle because earlier it was actually down a little bit in the bad section, and now it's just ever so slightly in the good section. All right, it's time for the rejuvenation. Switch this to Dyna Low. I've never used this rejuvenation feature before on this tester or any CRT for that matter. In fact, before today, I've never even used this whole tester or any tester for that matter. This was my first time playing around with these. And really all I know is what I read in the manual and what I've read on the internet about how these things work. So the manual said just to momentarily push this button, release it, and then switch this function knob back to emission and see if there's any improvement. Here we go. Okay, I just pushed it for maybe a second there. Let's change this back to emission. And that might be all she wrote for this CRT because there's nothing on here now. Let's turn this off and try again. Heater, shorts, emission. We're getting nothing, nothing at all. So I guess that might have killed this CRT once and for all. Interesting. Well, let's plug the computer's analog board back into here because maybe there's a fault in this thing and it's just not working anymore. Or maybe something failed here. And I just wanna see if <laughs> this CRT is in fact dead as a doornail, which I, Bet it is. Incidentally, you have to plug a motherboard in. The CRT won't do anything. There's no high voltage if the motherboard is not generating horizontal and vertical sync pulses. So with this plugged in, this will actually power up and generate high voltage and do something. Otherwise, you'll get absolutely a black screen every time. All right, let's turn this on. All right, well, the CRT isn't killed. Let's see if I can turn up the screen here. Yeah, I'd say that it's definitely no brighter than it was, but it's, but it's not dead. It seems like whatever failed, failed inside my tester. That's pretty disappointing. All right, we're back in business. Notice we have emissions again, and the reason why it stopped working was a bad capacitor. This capacitor here is 50 microfarads, 450 volts. Well, I couldn't find an exact match for this, so I found an 80 microfarad or 82 microfarad, 450 volt capacitor off a power supply. I stole it off this poor power supply here, which does work. Well, not anymore because I took that capacitor off. It seems that when I pushed this button, it blew this capacitor and turned it into a dead short, which kept this thing from working. But as you can see, it does work now. And I forgot to show this life test earlier. What the manual says is when you flip this switch to the right, what happens is you need to watch the needle. 
It says that if you flip this quickly and this falls very quickly, then the tube is bad. Well, it's all rather vague in the manual, so let's push this now. And it does hover for a second, and then it falls, but I don't really know what is normal and what is not normal. Also, when I had this thing open, I sprayed it with deoxit, all of these controls, just to make sure they are working well. This thing has a 1969 date code inside, so all of the parts were point to point. There's no circuit board inside of here. Okay, with the new cap, let's set it for Dyna Low, and I'm gonna push this button for a second, and hopefully things don't explode. Here we go. All right, let's back to emission. Honestly, it's having no effect whatsoever. So I guess let's just do it again. Who knows? Well, I, waited. I did it for a second. Let's just do it another second here and put it back to emission. If anything, it's definitely looking worse than it was. So who knows? Let's just try one more time. Dyna Low. Back on emission. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Remember before it was actually up by the good section, but who knows? Okay, let's just try this medium setting now. Dyna Medium. Here we go. Oh, I heard a spark inside. I wonder if the other capacitor, there were two of those orange caps, and I wonder if the other one just blew out. Let's see, if we go back to emission, there's nothing. Yep, something happened in here. That doesn't seem quite right. Nah, yeah, something's the matter here. Let's check the cutoff here. Okay, back to emission. Yeah, I don't quite believe this. So there's a setting under here for N or S, normal or sensitive. And if you put it on sensitive, this thing shoots way up, but I think the needle's getting stuck. This, this meter doesn't work so great. So it's showing so high, don't quite believe it. So on the normal setting before though, it never read anything. And now it's just reading crazy high. I don't really know what this should look like on a good CRT. So again, my, my inexperience with using this thing is definitely not helping right now. Well, something has changed on here. Let's hook it up to the Macintosh and see if anything has actually changed when it comes to picture quality. All right, let's see what happens. Hmm, it's not booting. I didn't hear the bong. Oh, weird. What's going on here? Well, there was a little bit of strangeness with the power supply just there. So I don't think this thing looks any better. Well, on second thought, I've adjusted G2 so I don't see the raster and it's actually brighter right now with G2 set the way it is right now and the black is still actually black. It's a little soft because it's driving the CRT so hard, but it's definitely a little bit brighter than it was. I guess let's try to rejuvenate it some more and see what happens. All right, ready for round two. Let's check the emissions. Still doing that thing where it's off the charts, so I'm gonna move this down to the normal and try to get this up into the good section. I think earlier when I had it set for S or sensitive and I was reading that good was fake. Basically, I should have had it on the N for normal section and it's here in the bad. So I'm gonna try and get it up into the good section while it's set to normal. Okay, let's go to Dyna Low again. We'll just try that. See if that makes any difference at all. And no, it's exactly the same on here. So right to Dyna Medium, we'll just try this one again. There's definitely a spark going on inside of here. Must be dumping a lot of current into the CRT. Whoa, okay. So now on the normal setting, it's up in the good area. I mean, it's not very far into it, but it's up before it was halfway in the bad, and it's definitely gone up a little bit. Let's check it for shorts. No shorts. Let's just double check the cutoff. Yep, that looks fine. Yeah, so, okay. How about I do it? One more time on the medium, real quick. Ready? Ooh, made a little sparky sound. Well, two hits of medium and it's up in the good section. I'm tempted to just hit it one more quick time on medium, see if we can get a little more out of that. Medium. I'm probably being greedy here, but oh well, here we go. Real quick. It's gonna be hard to see with the camera angle, but it's just under the four, although it's dropping ever so slightly. So I'll let this sit a little while and we'll see if this drops or stays in the good range. Well, it's been sitting a little while and it has stabilized. It just dropped a little bit further and now it's not moving any further. 
Okay, power on the machine. Sorry, I forgot to turn on my microphone audio so there's no sound. So wow, right away, it looks so much brighter. It's shocking. That really made a huge difference. Let me adjust the G2 voltage, bring it down a little bit. The way this looks right now is honestly pretty shocking. Let me adjust the focus here to get it as good as possible. Oh yeah, it's amazing. I'm really blown away. So I've done some calibration. I have G2 voltage set for around 460 volts, which is still higher than spec, but it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really shocked. I've booted into system 7.1 just to test the brightness slider. And I'm even shocked here because there's actually some headroom. Turning the brightness up actually results in a brighter picture that's actually too bright. I wanted to do an AB comparison of the brightness of the screen before and after the rejuvenation. I realized I didn't lock the exposure on the camera when I first recorded. So the camera was doing a lot of auto adjustment, auto aperture, which made the screen look a lot brighter than it was in real life. You have to believe me that originally it was really dim and soft and pretty much unusable. And at this point now, I wouldn't say this looks as good as a brand new screen, but it's a 100% usable experience at this point. It's plenty bright and it's very sharp. And this thing worked amazing. So what I did do is take some pictures of the screen with my phone. And here it is with an AB comparison. And you'll see it's a huge difference. With the overhead light turned off, it looks even better. It's just amazing, the improvement. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. I am absolutely shocked on how well the rejuvenation process actually worked on this CRT. As for how long it's gonna last, who knows? Some people say it's gonna be a number of hours before it'll be worse than it was before. But you know what? Some hours are better than no hours because like I mentioned before, this CRT was gonna go into e-waste. So at this point, if I get any use out of it, that's better than nothing. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You can hit that thumbs down button. You can subscribe for more videos. There'll be lots more in the future. I'd love to hear your comments and your suggestions about this video in the comment section below. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. So I figured some of you would want to see inside the BNK 465. So of course I had the screws off it so I could see what was wrong with it after doing that first rejuvenation. Let me flip this over. Here's the inside of it. It's all point to point wiring. 1969 is the date right here. It says March 1969 here on the meter. No circuit boards anywhere to be seen, but that's just the way things were built in the old days. There were two of these orange capacitors, 50 microfarads at 450 volts. The one on this side was what shorted out when I tried to use the rejuvenate the first time. So I replaced it here with an 82 microfarad, 450 volt cap. That's all I could find that was even similar. This one is still okay. It's testing around 30 microfarad, but this one after rejuvenating, it turned to a dead short. These two red capacitors are five microfarads, 450 volts. Both of these test good on my LCR meter. Dissipation is pretty low on these as well, so I'd say these two are still fine. Everything else in here is just resistors and things like that, and they all work fine. I tested a few of them with the LCR meter and they're all within spec. There are a couple of these knobs here. In fact, this one here is rather MIG multi-layer thing. So a liberal spray of deoxit and moving it back and forth just made everything work a little more reliably. So that's it. That's the BNK 465. I'd say this thing needs a good cleaning at this point. Since I got this thing, I never cleaned it. I just threw it up in the crawl space because I didn't have the right adapters for it. So until today, this thing had never been used. So I'm gonna give this thing a little bit of a clean so at least cosmetically it looks nicer and it's not so dirty to touch.